Well, good morning. What a beautiful, bright, sunny morning. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is Tuesday, December the 12th. We're going into the King James Bible. This is the Revelation of Jesus Christ, chapter 3. And again, this is all in red. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things say is he that had the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest, and art dead. Be watchful, and strengthen, strengthen the things which remain, that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief. And thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia. Write, These things saith he that is holy, that is true. He that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews, and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither hot nor cold. I would that thou wert hot or cold. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed, that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him, and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit say unto the churches. <sighs> okay. There is an awful lot packed in here. 
first thing that jumps out at me is the Church of Philadelphia. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Have you noticed that he never said that were no, nonetheless? Okay. He said it to the other two, the one before and the one after, but he doesn't say it to the Church of Philadelphia. The Christians in Philadelphia were being kicked out of the synagogues by the Jews and the doors were locked. And Jesus says, I can open any door that's shut and I can shut any door that's open. He says, so don't worry. Don't worry. I've got this. You've been faithful to me. You've hung on. You've been an overcomer. It's been difficult. There's been temptation there. But then he tells him about the tribulation period. Because thou hast the patience, I will keep thee from the hour of temptation. He's referring to tribulations, the seven-year period, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Then he says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man shall take thy crown. He's referring to the rapture. And he's telling them, because they've been faithful, because they've held on. And isn't it encouraging that it's the church at Philadelphia? And how close are we to Philadelphia here in the United States? I know, I know, there's no connection. But at least there's hope, isn't there? There's hope. Now here's the biggie. The church at Laodicea, okay? He said, Let me get it here. I know thy works, that thou art neither hot nor cold. I would thou wert hot or cold. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Laodicea had terrible water. Terrible water. But there was hot springs at a city above them, and there was fresh cold springs from another city. And the cold springs came in and supplied water and the hot springs came down. But by the time the hot spring water came down, it was kind of lukewarm. And it had sulfur in it, so it was nasty tasting. But I guess they could use it for its warmth and washing it or whatever, I don't know. But he's using the comparison of those two waters. And he's saying, the hot water is good. The cold water is good. But the lukewarm water, you just want to spit it out. Ah, that's nasty. Okay? You're neither one or the other. I wish that you were hot or cold, but you're lukewarm. Therefore, I will spew you out. Okay? He's not saying you're on the side of the devil or the side of God. You're sitting on the fence. No. The hot and the cold refer to both being on his side. It's, it's a positive. But he said you're neither. Now, he's using this comparison because the Laodiceans know about their water. So when the letter catches to, up to them, they will know the hot water is good, the cold water is good. But that lukewarm water, that's nasty stuff. You spit that out. It's nasty. They've actually found the pipes. Listen to this. In archaeology, they have found the pipes from the hot water that came down into the city and the pipes were corrosive with sulfur and nasty i mean the sulfur build up inside the pipes they were nasty this is living proof of what jesus was talking about they said that that water by the time it got there would have lost its heat would have lost its potency and would have been just nasty I guess they reheated it and it was kind of halfway warm. So by the time they didn't have to expend so much in hot water to, or energy to heat it up. So that's why they brought that water down. But as far as drinking is concerned, it was bad stuff. And Jesus is saying, you're neither hot nor cold, which is good. Cold is good, hot's good. You're lukewarm. Lukewarm is a non-committed state. It's neither hot nor cold, is it? And that's what a lip service Christian is, a lukewarm Christian. He's not saved yet. He's giving lip service. And this is why God says, Jesus says earlier, about how he will be judged. And he says, uh, 
He that overcometh the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. So the thing is, you had a chance of getting your name in there, but because you faltered, your name wasn't put in. You've been blotted out. That's how I interpret it. If you interpret it differently, let me know. So there we are, chapter three. We've covered Sardis, uh, Laodicea, and what was it? Philadelphia. Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Chapter four, we start getting into the visions. And uh, it's going to get a little bit more complicated and meaty. But know that the seven churches are a cross-section of what the world is at the moment. And if you were to say, wherever you live, Jesus is writing. This is to the church in Adams County. Let's be encompassing. <laughs> Knowing what you see going on, if you were to describe all the individual churches as one church in Adams County, what would Jesus be saying to that church? What would Jesus be saying to you and the church that you belong to? Let's make it even bigger. What is God saying to the Christian church as it stands now? I think there's a little bit of everything in there, isn't there? You know, I think there's a little bit of everything in there. So Jesus gave us these seven churches as a representative state of things to come. And he's told us what's going to happen. We've been given some very definites as well, being clothed in white raiment. And what about Jerusalem? See how important Jerusalem is in the news? See how important Israel, as far as we're concerned, and I think you can possibly say geographically, Jerusalem is the center of the world. Jerusalem is the center of the world. Amazing. It is the center of our world for sure. Don't ignore Jerusalem. Don't ignore the news that's going on in Israel. Don't get depressed by it. God's in charge. God is in charge. As a Christian, you're just seeing confirmation of prophecies coming to fruition. And that should gladden your heart. Now, if you have concern because of other people that have not yet been saved, that's the conviction of the Holy Spirit. What are you going to do about it? Begin with prayer. Begin with evoking the power of the Holy Spirit. And then see where it takes you. Don't try to get ahead of God. Don't try to get ahead of the Holy Spirit. Walk by faith. Walk by faith. Okay? Know that God is in charge and he's got this. And he doesn't want to see anybody perish. Nobody in the whole wide world. Nobody, because he loves us. God loves us. Say that, God loves us. God loves me, and I love you too. Thank you for listening. Have a great and wonderful day. Speak to you tomorrow. Bye for now.